Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the Risen Nation Church podcast. I pray that this message today impact your life and above all, draw you into a deeper encounter with Jesus. In honor of, of our moms, I, I wanted to share uh, <clears throat> this word that the Lord gave me. And I believe that it is not just for the moms, that it's gonna encourage the dads and everybody. Uh, but I wanna talk to this morning about this characteristic of God that is like a mom. Is that okay? And so when we hear about the names of God in Scripture, when you there's probably over 20 names, and then there's derivatives of those names and additions to those names in the Old Testament of how God is described in the Old Testament. Are you all with me? And every name is not just an identifier you know, his name wasn't just Jesus Christ. It was description of his nature. And so Yahweh isn't just a name, Yahweh. It's a description of a nature of God. So every name of God is a description of a characteristic, of an attribute of God. When he came to Moses in Exodus chapter three, he said, I am that I am. So if we need to identify God, if you take all the names away, that's who God is. I am that I am. And so in the custom of the Jews, I am that I am abbreviated is Yahweh. So they would never say I am that I am. And it was an honor thing that they wouldn't say or even write down the name of God because it it was not a, a name as in an indicator, but a name as in this is who he is. This is his nature, his characteristic. And so the, the name Yahweh is actually in the Hebrew, an abbreviation for I am that I am. Make sense? And so Yahweh, Yahweh is I become whom I become. And we maybe, maybe we can do a names of God study in the future. But I want to talk today about a certain characteristic of God. And it's important that we understand that God is not male or female, Right? And so we're not talking about gender. God is spirit. And so don't get weird on me. Don't be get a, we're, we, we don't do good with spooky Christians. We're going to pray for you and deliver you from being spooky. Okay. Don't be weird. It's not male or female. He's a, God is spirit. I say God is spirit. So I'm not talking about gender. I'm not, you know, talking about, you know, I'm not equating anything to this crazy nonsense that we see in the world today. It's like, it's beyond not, it's just demonic at this point. Um, So please keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not talking about gender. Okay. But we're talking about characteristics. Write this down. The names of God identify his nature. And so every name of God identifies another nature of God an attribute, a characteristic, personality trait. And so God is neither male nor female, but there are male and female characteristics. Go with me. Does that make sense? And so he's, he's not a gender, but his love is displayed in how a father would display love. His love is also displayed in how a mother would display love. So John chapter 17, I mean, I'm sorry, Genesis. Thank you. Can we bless God for Pastor Mark? What a great word a couple weeks ago. He's still helping me. He's still helping me down there. Genesis chapter 17. (laughs) And this is after, so read 15 and 16. Read the context on your own time, but this is right after Sarai comes to Abram and says, I want you to go into Hagar and I I want to give you a son because I can't give you a son. So Hagar is going to give you a son. And they went ahead of God. They went ahead of the promise of God. And they, they tried to work for themselves something that God had promised them. Are you guys with me? And so this is right after Abram has this experience. And then he experiences 13 years of silence between the end of 16 and 17. Because 16 ends that he was 86, 17 ends that he's 99. It's 13 years, right? And so think about the time, the mindset that Abram was in. Think about 
uh, <clears throat> kind of his posture, his spirit. It probably was an easy time. And he knew that he couldn't wait for God, that Sarai couldn't wait for God. And they tried to do something themselves that God had promised that he would do for them. And so, <clears throat> and God was gracious. And he, and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of Hagar. I'm going to take care of Ishmael, but they're not the ones. And so this silence happens. And so we see this, this side of God, this nature of God show up during this time of difficulty in Abram's life. And verse seven, chapter 17, verse one says, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Say almighty. Walk before me or walk before my face. That word me is the word peniel. Walk before my face and be blameless or be perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you and I will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I have, and I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Say exceedingly. And I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. And so the key part of this is the word almighty. In verse one, does your, when it says, I am almighty God, I'm reading out of the New King James. Does your version say almighty? Does anyone else have a version that doesn't say almighty? Okay, good. And so when almighty is used, I want you to write this down. In the Old Testament, it is the word El Shaddai. How many of you have heard the name of God, El Shaddai? So um, Almighty God, so El Shaddai is how, and this is the first time that the Lord reveals himself in this way in Scripture, in this season of Abram's life, of missing out on a promise, disobeying God, and having 13 years of silence, and then El Shaddai shows up. El Shaddai shows up to Abram, and when El Shaddai shows up, his name is changed. The breath of God, the Yah of God, is inserted into Abram's nature, making him Abraham, and he becomes exceedingly fruitful, the father of many nations. So the word Almighty, Almighty, is the word Shaddai. S-H-A-D-D-A-I. I want to get like all the names of God banners like we had in the 90s. That would be nice. Uh, <laughs> Shaddai means the most powerful. It means almighty. And it comes from the word Shaddad, which means powerful. It means to deal violently with, to lay waste, to destroy, and to devastate. Well, happy Mother's Day. So we'll see you guys. You want me to say that again? Shaddad is to be powerful, to deal violently with, to lay waste, to destroy, to devastate. The prefix of that word, Shaddad, is another Hebrew word. Are you guys ready to just learn some Hebrew today? We're going to learn some Hebrew. It's another Hebrew word that's called Shad, S-H-A-D. S-H-A-D, Shad. And it literally means a breast, like the breast of a woman or the bosom of a woman. And so we see that this, this name, this nature of God, which I'm going to break down a little bit more later, but this nature of God denotes an all-powerful that can deal violently and destroy, but it also is denoting an all-bountiful, all-sufficient, all-abundant God that can destroy and supply. <clears throat> It is the ability, speaking of the, the nourishment of, of the breast of a mom, it is the ability to continually pour without losing your own supply. It is denoting inexhaustible supply. 
That is Shaddai. It is, he is powerful. He is, he deals violently, destroys, dev- devastates. But in the root of this nature of God is the one that is all sufficient, all bountiful, all abundant. Are you guys, are you guys following me? It is the ability that you can pour without losing your own supply. There is unending supply in this nature of God that he is revealing to Abram. So he comes to Abram, who's trying to work it on his own, and he comes as the one that is all supplying, all sufficient, all abundance, and saying, Abram, if you would just rely on El Shaddai, I will, I will come as all abundant, all bountiful, all sufficient, all supply. So it is this breasted nature of God that is like a mother. Are we okay? That is this mothering nature of God that he comes to Abram in this way. And so this is the first time that the name El Shaddai is used to Abram after a time when he was trying to make it work for himself. Whenever we try to make it work for ourselves, and God comes and comforts us, it's El Shaddai. Whenever we need mercy and God shows mercy, it's El Shaddai. Whenever we come to the end of ourself and we have nowhere to turn, we have nowhere to run, it's the nature of God, El Shaddai, that I have more than enough for you. If you come to me, all who are weary, I will supply every need, El Shaddai. So at the end of Jacob's life, and Gen- just write this down, in Genesis 49, 20, 25, Genesis 49, 25, at the end of Jacob's life, he is blessing each of his sons, and he says to Joseph in verse 25, by the God of your father who will help you and by the almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb. And so I'm gonna read it, not in the King James Version, but I'm gonna read it as the the actual Hebrew words. It says, by El, say El. El is God, the father. By El of your father who will help you and by the Shaddai who will bless you. I heard my father say this once, that fathers tell you where to go and mothers guide you along the way. So it's the L of God that will guide, that will show what the way to go, and it's the Shaddai that will bless you and help you and guide you along the way. Blessings of the deep that lies beneath and blessings of the breasts. It speaks of the milk of the breasts, the nourishment of, of the breast of a mother and of the womb. Are we all together? So God is showing us a picture of his nature here through this relationship of mother and child and the nourishment and the dependency that takes place. Like I, my life was flipped upside down as far as how I see moms and how I see God in his incredible creation when my wife and I had babies and seeing how the breast milk brings nourishment and in one substance, it takes care of everything that the baby needs. It doesn't change substance. It's the same substance. And I want to read just from a natural standpoint, some things about breast milk that blew my mind. Okay. So, and how many, we're talking spirit. Okay. Spirit. All right. I was going to make sure the weird ones aren't going to, you know, all right. Don't be weird. This is spirit. All right. So God's showing us a picture of his nature. Say a picture of his nature. I want to dis- I want you guys to see this nature of God, this mother side of God that I believe by the end of today we're going to have an experience with. I want to have an experience with El Shaddai this morning. We need El Shaddai. We are we have been going after for weeks and I feel like my father-in-law capped it off a couple of weeks ago, but we've, going, we've been going after this freedom thing in this house. We've been, we've been pinpointing, we've been going after parts of our life that are unwhole that need to be whole. Parts of our life that are out of order that need to be brought back into order. And this is what El Shaddai does, okay? So it's, a, it's, a, it's for nourishment, and there is a dependency. Like when my Chloe was born, when she was hungry, 
She didn't care about me at all. Even at times when she wasn't hungry, she didn't care. I'm just kidding. Uh, But babies have this dependency on their mom. And so this is why God came to Abram as Shaddai. I want to, we're not going to really turn to any other verses. And I, I want to stay, like, I want you guys to meditate because we read sometimes as if it's like a history book, but there is truth. There is life. If we read what God is saying through the words, right? So breast milk is not only nutritional for healthy growth, but it has an abundance of medicinal properties that not only treat disease and infection, but prevent it. And what's amazing, and I'm not going to be as scientific as Pastor Josh. I'll just look like an idiot. But he talked about milk. If you guys haven't heard that message from the first, from I think it was the first of this month, go back on YouTube and listen to it. But some of the properties in breast milk, and what's amazing is that the same thing that it supplies to the child, it supplies to the mom. And so, and a lot of moms probably already know this, but I'm just studying this, it's blowing my mind. <laughs> it has this medicinal property that not only treats disease, it's not just like a you know, over-the-counter medicine, but it prevents the same disease, treats it and prevents it in the baby and the mom. Like I've read that uh, <clears throat> moms that are breastfeeding, it reduces your risk of all kinds of things, cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure and, and all this and all this stuff. So it not only, uh, <clears throat> and what it shows me is that the desire of God, that it actually blesses God to nourish. Amen. That the desire in the heart of God, that it's not just, okay, I'll give them another cracker so they'll leave me alone. I'll answer their little prayers so they leave me alone. But the, this mothering side of God, this heart of God that seeks to pour, this mothering side of God that seeks to nourish. Like when God takes care of you, it does something in him. Like when your father, when your mother takes care of you, like when I, even though my kids have way too many toys, but when I give them a new toy, even though they play for it for 30 seconds and then never play for it with it again, when I give them a toy, it does something in me because they're, they're full of joy. They're happy. And so he's not reluctantly supplying for you. He's not reluctantly nourishing you. He's not reluctantly comforting you. But there is something that he needs as a mother to supply his children. That a lot of times we have this mentality that we are like this mature Christian and we got it all figured out and we don't need to ask for anything. But sometimes at the, this mothering side, El Shaddai needs us to come and say, God, I need you. I can't do it on my own. I need your supply. I need your nourishment. Finally, they come to me. As a mom sits at home, and they can hear their children, teenage children, young adults going through things in life. And they don't want to, they don't want to pester. They don't want to drive them away, but they just sit and wait. Lord, let them come and talk to me. Let them come and, and need me. There comes a certain age where, where parents, um, <clears throat> Like I've noticed in certain things, even with Chloe, that she doesn't need me as much. And I desire that she would be back at that age where she would need me for this. And we sometimes get so caught up in trying to have everything figured out and thinking we've reached some place in God like Abram like and Sarai. Let's just, we, we could do it. We could figure it out. Hagar's here. She's the maid. She's not doing anything. Let's just, you know, we can have a baby with her and try and help God along when God wants to be the one that pours, when God wants to be the one that nourishes. He says, come to me. And so this mothering side of God is what I want us to see today, that it not only nourishes us, but it nourishes him. Like it not only supplies me, but it supplies the one who is doing the supplying, that he needs it, he wants it, he desires it. And sometimes in our high-mindedness and all of our theology, we can't just come to him and say, Father, I need your nourishment. I need your supply. I need what only you can give me. I need the milk that only you can give. Breast milk in, is um, 
can change its composition based on the need. This is insane. For instance, researchers have found out that breast milk changes based on the gender of the baby. Not only that, but it'll also change based on the level of stress in the environment or joy in the environment. And so God knows exactly what you're going through when you're going through it. He knows the environment that you are in. And if we come to him and we embrace this nature of God as El Shaddai, he will give you exactly what you need, even in your environment. Even if the environment is not ideal, he is the nourishment in your environment. So good. He, however, it's the same substance. It's the same God. Okay, we're not, we're not, we're not Hindus and we have 5,000 gods, okay? We're not talking about different gods. Behold, Israel, behold, our Lord is one Lord. One God, one Savior. Though, you know, even sometimes we get weird with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and we split them apart. They're all one. The Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. The Father is the Holy Spirit. The Father is Jesus, okay? We need to take all the separation out of our, our, of our thinking, Amen. But if we see this side of him, it will help us embrace this nature that he is longing to pour. That no matter what state we find ourselves in, he may be the same God, but he's going to supply differently for the state that you're in. And this is especially for young parents that sometimes we get anxious that we are not advancing in life or doing the things that we want to do or spending the time with the Lord. I had a great conversation uh, with with a, a young couple about spending time with the Lord and how it's difficult when you have young kids. And sometimes you wake up at 5 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and then you hear a sweet little knock at your door, and it's your baby girl that wants to sit on your lap. And I'm never going to tell her to go away. So, all you religious people say, I'm going away, I'm praying right now. I'm never going to do them, my daughter. Because what that does, just let me take a quick side note. What that does, it puts a, it puts a separation between my daughter coming to her father, and now she has a complex in her thinking of Jesus doesn't want me around. He has a meeting with Bubba right now, and I can't interrupt. Now, there's a time when I'm studying and I can't be interrupted, but I will never refuse because we want our children to embrace the presence of Jesus with us and not feel like they're a burden. And so, but what I told this young couple is God gives you grace for the season you're in. Don't worry about, don't worry about everyone else's season and environment. The milk that comes from El Shaddai will supply the season you're in. Don't try to, to produce anything and try to, like Abram, and try to figure it out on your own. Embrace the environment, even though if maybe it's not an ideal environment because he will treat you. He will nourish you. He will treat the disease. He will treat the issues. He will give you preventative measures of grace in that environment. Are you guys with me? Women produce fore milk and hind milk. In the first phase of breastfeeding, fore milk is produced, which is watery and more hydrating to quench the thirst of the baby. So as the baby comes and is hungry, the, th the thing that is quenched is the thirst. And after the milk is changed to hind milk, which is a higher fat content and thicker, and it satisfies the baby's hunger. It's insane. So ev literally from water, everything the baby needs, thirsty and hungry, is satisfied in the mother's milk. This is uh, also incredible. When a mother... My wife told me about this one, and I looked it up to make sure she wasn't making it up, and she wasn't. <laughs> when a mother kisses her baby, she samples the pathogens on her baby's face. This is wild. Which then travel to the mom's lymphatic system. The mother's body then creates the antibodies to fight these pathogens, which she feeds to her baby in her milk. So by kissing, that's why... 
Erica told me there was times where she just desired, she didn't know what was wrong, but she just desired to kiss. I need to kiss the babies. That's this mother instinct of God where when we need him, he will come and kiss us. And the, this pathogens that travel from the baby's face, the mom then produces those antibodies and those, those pathogens help create the antibodies that come in her milk that supply the exact need of the infirmity. So whatever the baby is going through by the kiss of a mother, it will be completely healed through the breast milk. It's, in, it's insane. So when El Shaddai, when, when the word is breast, it is this nature of God that supplies in this way. It is, he has all the supply that we need. He has all the abundance that we need. He has everything that we need. There should be no other seeking outside of the face of El Shaddai. There should be no other desire outside of El Shaddai. And this is the foundation of our faith. Because in Exodus chapter three, it said through generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read it. Exodus chapter six, verse three. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they, um, I showed myself to them as El Shaddai, and they have yet to know me as Yahweh, as Jehovah. Think about that. Like not that he didn't come as Jehovah because he did, but what God did in generations was all as the revelation of El Shaddai. It wasn't until Moses that he was revealed as the lawgiver of Jehovah. And so he's all that we need. And I want to encourage us on this Mother's Day to embrace this mother side of God that sometimes, like Abram, we can think that we can figure it out all on our own and that we got it, we can handle it and we can put our big boy pants on, our big girl pants on when El Shaddai longs to nourish his bride, his body. El Shaddai longs to nourish his children. Studies have even shown that breast milk will target cancer, cancer cells and kill them without affecting the surrounding healthy cells. Talk about chemo. Philippians 4, 19 in the Amplified says, but my God will liberally supply, fill until full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. First Peter 2 says, therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word. This is how we are nourished by God. This is how El Shaddai nourishes you. Everything you need is in here. I said everything you need is in here. All supply, all abundance, it's all in here, and it will pinpoint and target what you need. In your body, in your environment, it, the El Shaddai will change and adjust for what you need, and it gives him life to pour out life to you. Like, I want to pull on this nature of God today because I, I need stuff. Does anyone else need God to do something for them? Let's be honest. I need God to do some things for me. I, I need this mother side of God. There are times when like I, I have the most amazing relationship with my father, but there's sometimes it's like, I just need mommy right now. When I had an ailment, I did not go to Bubba. He was, he, he was not the, the doctor of the family. He would say, oh, gross. And he would go like, go see your mom. Like he didn't, he didn't want to look at it. And so God wants us to approach him as this, this mom and desire the pure milk of the word. Desire only what he can supply that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If the Lord is gracious, somebody should say amen. So I want to go back real quick to this Shaddad. Remember the word Shaddad means to be powerful, to deal violently with, to lay waste to destroy, it means to oppress and to devastate. So like I was reading this, I'm like, that doesn't sound very motherly, but it does. <laughs> Powerful to deal violently with, to lay waste, to destroy, to oppress, to devastate. This, there is a powerful wrath of El Shaddai that while he is supplying and nourishing, he is violently destroying everything that comes against his children. 
This is the nature I want us to see, that simultaneously, while he is full, red hot of wrath, he is full, red hot of love for his children. And God immediately reminded me of a time when our, our three-year-old Olivia was having ear infections, like nonstop. And, and, and I, we were getting tired of it and, and I didn't know what to do. And I, I could pray all that I could pray. I could do all I could do. And we, we applied medicine. We went to every doctor. We, you know, we, we, we tried the holistic thing. We did everything we could do. And she would get, um, it seemed like oh, every other week on like infections. And, and we went into debt paying for it because we didn't have insurance at the time and, and medicine. And it was a horrible time. And I remember seeing my wife like El Shaddai, with this powerful, violent, destroying, devastating prayer. And it's like this thing came over her where she was going after relentlessly everything that was coming against her baby. And this is the El Shaddai of God that he will come after with relentless force everything that comes after you. Like I would never want a, if you see, even, you see, even see it in nature, like moms, you know, we, uh, the other day we were at uh, the park and you could see this, uh, this duck had laid eggs and the girls were looking at it. It was like under this tree and she was hovering over, like protecting the eggs. And she would like, kind of like do this to me, like back up, bro. Like she was like, and it's this mother instinct. And I remember this came over Erica and she prayed and we prayed together. And it was like this violent, like, I'm going to kill this thing. It was this violent, destroying, devastating thing where her love was pinpointed on this infection that doesn't belong in my child. And she went after this thing and we, she hasn't had an inf infection since. So praise God. But it's this side of God I want us to see that he will pursue while simultaneously nourishing you and giving you all you need and, and being there for you and comforting you, he is dealing with your enemies. While he is nourishing you, he is killing everything that is coming against you. Joel 1.15 says, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Shaddai. Isaiah 13.6 says, Well, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty, from El Shaddai. And when, when Isaiah is talking in this, he's talking about Babylon who were, God, who were oppressing God's people. Are you guys with me? So Isaiah here, he's prophesying that this day of the Lord is going to come as destruction from Shaddai, and he's speaking of towards Babylon. And Babylon were the oppressors of God's people. Shaddai means oppressor, meaning the El Shaddai will oppress what oppresses you. You guys aren't hearing it. It will oppress, he will oppress what oppresses you. It's this side of a, this vindictive almost side of a mother that's not gonna turn the other cheek, but if you touch my baby, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna hunt you down and I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna hunt you down and I'm gonna destroy you because you touched my baby, you touched my child. And we need to embrace God with this way that he's not just sitting on a throne in heaven with his arms crossed waiting for us to be perfect, but he's waiting for the opportunity to truly be El Shaddai. He was waiting for Abram to be quiet and alone long enough that he can come and say, Abram, I am El Shaddai and I will multiply you, but you got to depend on my dependency. You got to depend on my supply, on my abundance, that I am all bountiful, all abundant, all sufficient. And of yourself, Abram, you can do nothing. And if you lean on me, I will make you a covenant that I will make your generations cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. I will give you such a covenant that I will always be with your generations. They will be to me a people and I will be to them their God because of Shaddai. If you lean on Shaddai, he will supply all your needs and something that God desires Listen, this is not just an encouraging message for you. This is something that God desires of his children, that they would, they would come to him as El Shaddai, that he may nourish, that it would put a fulfillment. Like imagine something in us that would fulfill something in the heart of God. 
that there would is a fulfillment that is missing because largely we don't approach him this way, this mothering nature of God. And I, I promise you, if we approach him in this nature, with this attribute, everything in our life that is not of God, he will begin to pinpoint and target. He will begin to violently go after while simultaneously supplying your every need. So we don't need to do everything. It's what we just saying. We have the victory in him. He is our victory. He's done it all. So we, we don't have to get him to do anything for us. He wants us to lay down in his arms like a baby with her mother and get supply of the pure word, the pure milk of God. It's all that we need. It will pinpoint everything that comes against you. It's the heart of God saying that I'm just gonna shake everything that can be shaken, that only that which is unshakable only that which belongs to my kingdom, my children, my family can remain. Everything must get the hell out. And I'm not being vulgar, but God will pinpoint things of hell in your life. The demonic, he pinpoints it to destroy like a sniper in the crosshairs. It's done. But we don't lean on him this way bunch of Abrams, like we could figure it out. I got my Hagar. Lean on the El Shaddai. Lean on him. Isaiah 14, one to two, just write these down. It says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. When he has mercy, that's El Shaddai, and will still choose Israel. And Settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Verse two, this is after chapter 13. So read Isaiah 13 and Isaiah 14. But he does, he goes through the whole chapter of rebuking Babylon and he's telling them how I'm gonna devastate and destroy you, Babylon. And he's telling them exactly what he's gonna do to them. And then after he's finished dealing with the problem, he deals with his children and he says, I will have mercy on you, Jacob, and I will choose you and I will settle you in your own land. In other words, I'm gonna give you, church, what belongs to you. The strangers will be joined with them. I'm gonna join people with you that have this, this same vision and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids, speaking of Babylon in the land of the Lord. And they will take captive whose captives they were. <laughs> so good. And rule over their oppressors. This is what El Shaddai does. That he, will, he is the oppressor of the oppressors, that he will oppress what has oppressed you. So good. He will take captive what has taken you captivity. Like Jesus, he went and took captivity captive. He took the keys of death and hell and he became the oppressor of everything that oppresses his children. We have to embrace and see this heart of God that he's not after you, but he's so much for you that he would, he's asking us this morning, come to El Shaddai. Let me nourish you. Let me supply you. There's something that I am not being fulfilled in because everyone thinks they've got it figured out, but you've got to rely on me. I will captivate your captors. I will oppress your oppressors. And everything that can be shaken out of your life, I must shake it with devastating, destroying, violent ability that it can no longer touch you and your family. We call it prosperity gospel. It's the nature of God. You can't take away the nature of God because someone misused it. I remember one time, I remember one time when I was in high school and I was, you know, on the fence between the world and, and being saved. The Lord was getting me during, during that time. But I remember, I remember seeing my mom with this devastating look in her eye. It's crazy look in her eye. No. <laughs> and I was, they had told me don't, uh, <clears throat> we don't want you dating this particular girl. So I was like, okay. So then I proceeded to do that. <laughs> and 
we, it was like after football practice or something. And uh, <clears throat> we were like kissing by the shed on the football field. I'm not proud of this, but it's, it's kind of funny now. But, and if you're young, don't do this. And my mom pulls up to pick me up. And the person she told me not to date or to see, I was there doing that with. And so she pulls up and I remember looking over and I know it's my mom because you can barely see the top of her head when she's driving. And I could see her big blue eyes from like uh, 200 yards away. And I'm like, oh no. And I, she just goes like this to me. She goes like this and then I start walking and then she points at the girl and says like she wanted to deal with her too. And my mom's not like this. My mom would usually just tell me to get in the car and go home. And, but they could see that this, this person was taking me down a path that wasn't mine. And they could see that she was leading me in a way that, that was, was the end of that way was not good. And so she pinpointed with violent accuracy what the problem was. And she came, she, we both walked to the car and I can't remember what she said. She rebuked us. She rebuked the girl. She said, uh, son, I don't want you dating her and don't date my son. Don't touch my son. And she rebuked what was coming against her child. And there was a fear that took me over for my, because I was fearful of this little lady, but I was also fearful that there's a large Arab man at my home called Bubba. <laughs> And there's a lot more stories with that, but we won't get into it. And thankfully, it, the El Shaddai, my mom dealt with it, which I was happy with that the dad didn't have to when I got home. But I remember she was, she was so upset and violently dealt with what was coming against her family because it wasn't just me not listening to her. It was, this, it was this spirit. It wasn't even the poor girl, you know, teenage girl. She doesn't know, but it's this, this spirit of the world that was trying to get her son. It was this spirit of disobedience that was over my life that she was going after. And she stopped it and said, no more. We're not going to do this anymore. It was the spirit she was going after. And, and unfortunately, it you know, manifested on this girl. Uh, but she took care of the issue. This is El Shaddai. And what's amazing is that when we got in the car, it was kind of silent. I, this is the part that makes me laugh. It was kind of silent. And my... I think I've said this before. My favorite Middle Eastern dish, I just got my Bible all wet. My favorite Middle Eastern dish is called Bezela. And I remember when we got in the car, it was silent for like maybe 10 minutes. Thanks, Chris. That's good. That's good. Thank you. It was silent for like 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden she turns, she looks over to me and she was like, I made you Bezela today. And so like, it was like, that was her way of saying like, we're good now. I just had to get this violent, indignation out of me. And that reminded me of, this is El Shaddai, that while he is supplying, breastfeeding, while he is nourishing, while he's giving dinner, he is violently dealing with your enemies. He is violently dealing with that which comes against you. And so, Noah, can we have the band come up? I want to sing one song, and I want all the moms to come up, not right now, in a minute. And, and I want to pray over our moms. Can we do that? Because I want, I want the fathers to help their children embrace this side of their mother. I want the husbands to embrace this side of your wife. And I, I've, I felt weight today for those that want, that are married, that want children that can't have it. So I, if you're a, if you're a mom and you're trying to have a child, I want you to come up because we're going to de declare prophetically that you are going to be a mother. Genesis 1, 17, verse 1, it says, walk before me blameless. So we're going back to 17, 1. Don't watch the band. They're doing their thing. 17, 1, walk before me. Remember, he says, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me blameless. That word blameless is complete, perfect, whole, full, undefiled, without blemish, and upright. So El Shaddai is this mothering characteristic of God that will relentlessly pursue everything that defiles you and makes you imperfect. 
because this El Shaddai will make you blameless. That word, when it says in 17.1, I am El Shaddai, walk before me, that's come to my face. Walk is also the word come or to go. It's to live and before is not there. So it's literally just walk me, walk my face, come to my face, come to my nature, my peniel, my characteristics, perfect. That word am be is also not there. So it's just walk before me, perfect. This is what El Shaddai does. He makes us blameless in his sight. He makes us perfect. It's the pinpoint accuracy of the to deal violently with. It's the breast milk of nourishment and the breast milk of a disease killer that is stronger than any drug. It's God. It's coming to him that he may make you whole. So El Shaddai is acquainted with wholeness. And I am believing that our community will be whole today. I'm, com- I'm believing that moms will be whole today, that we will have a, a, an encounter with El Shaddai today. Somebody say amen. amen. El Shaddai is all sufficient in power to defend us. He's all sufficient in wisdom to teach us, all sufficient in love to comfort us, all sufficient in grace to cover us, all sufficient in wealth to prosper us, all sufficient in goodness to bless us, all sufficient in kindness to favor us, all sufficient in patience to test us, all sufficient in glory to change us, all sufficient in peace to cause us to rest in him, and he is all sufficient in faithfulness to keep his promises. He is everything that you need. You should stand to your feet. He's all that we need. He's the abundance that you need. He's the bountiful spirit of God that longs and has fulfillment in supplying his children. Philippians 4, 13 in the Amplified says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Somebody say amen. Thank you again for joining us for this podcast. We pray that above all, your life was touched by his presence. If you're interested in learning more about the church or getting plugged in, you can visit us at www.risennation.org or follow us on social media to stay up to date with all that God is doing here. We love you guys. God bless.